We're going to send things down in five, four, three, two, one. And good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to West Hartford High School Sports on Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. Today it's baseball action as the Hall Warriors take on the Connor Chieftains. We're at the University of Hartford Fiendella Field and it's Mayor's Cup action. Pete Lamoureux along with Jeff Kaplowitz. Both of these teams having good seasons headed to the state tournament. Hall 12 and 6. Well, Connor checks in at 11 and 8. Should be a great pitching matchup today. Mike Matthews gets the start for Connor. He's been the MVP of this game the last two years for his work on the mound, while left hander Chase Jeter goes for Hall. Pleased to be working again with Jeff Kaplowitz and Coach K. Jeter has been dominant in 2017, began his season with a perfect game against Rockville. How about that? Well, perfect game also shows uh, his stuff and his control, not walking anybody and actually taking uh, command of the entire game. So uh, he's had a great season. His ERA well, well under two, and um, he's got a great future. I mean, he's a junior and uh, next, next year and then on to, on to college. Yeah. And uh, there is a big difference between the power pitchers, the big left-handed power pitchers like Randy Johnson, Sandy Koufax in my day, and, uh, and the ones that get it done on the mound with uh, Guile and uh, pitching, pitching know-how, like Tom Glavin, who also in the Hall of Fame. Connor Chieftains come in with a record of 11 up and 8 down on the season, and this is how they'll line up for Sanjay Rambia, the second-year head coach. Max Main will lead it off. He'll be at second base. Pat Barron will hit second in center field. Joe Celio, the senior first baseman, bats number three. In the cleanup spot is third baseman Colby Jones. Batting number five, Jeff LaRosa at shortstop. Mike Mack gets the start in left field, hitting sixth. Nick Gagliotti, the DH, bats seventh. Batting eighth, the catcher Sam Porcello. And in right field and batting ninth is Dominic Nyman. The defense behind Chase Jeter today. It'll be Colin Fitzsimmons over at first. Michael Cicerello at second. Andrew Nicholas at short. Brian Renker at third. Left to right in the outfield, Patrick O'Keefe. Colin Puja and Griffin Van Rye getting his first start. Ben Castro, the junior receiver, forms the other half of the battery today. Should be a good one. Hall has won four consecutive games, Jeff, so they come in with plenty of momentum. Yes, and uh, I did watch the uh, hall Connor game earlier this season. Uh, very competitive uh, until the last few innings, last two innings, and uh, Connor took that game. So here's Max Main, righty batter to lead it off against the lefty Jeter here at Fiendella Field. And the first pitch is called strike one, and we're underway. Main on the season, batting 286, no home runs, 11 RBIs, and has a sterling on base percentage of 436, exactly what you're looking for at the top of the order. And the 0 1 pitch stays wide, count evens at a ball and one strike. Main has walked four times has struck out 10, one of three second basemen that have been used this year by Sanjay Rambia. Langevin and Wolski are the others. The 1-1 is a swing and a foul back, back behind us and out of play. And Jeter gets ahead in the count at one ball and two strikes. We talked about that perfect game that the left-hander Chase Jeter authored on opening day against Rockville at 15 strikeouts of the 21 outs that he recorded that day. So he has that ability to be dominant. Strike three called on the inside corner and very quickly one away. I liked his approach just there. He, he was outside most of the count and then, on, and then came inside for the strikeout. So there's a lefty versus lefty confrontation as Pat Barron, the center fielder, stands in. Senior batting 306 on the campaign, no home runs, seven RBIs, and very interesting stat ledger including eight walks and just six strikeouts. Bouncing ball up the middle, through into center field, the base hit. So Barron becomes the first base runner this afternoon. Seeing eye single up the middle. That's the old hitting it where it is pitched. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Get on base, Jeff. Absolutely. In and on his hands a bit. He didn't really get the barrel of bat on the ball, but uh, found an opening in the middle of the diamond. So here's Joe Celio, senior first baseman, lefty batter, hitting 439 all-conference performer a year ago, has a home run to his credit, and 13 RBIs. Fitzsimmons holding the runner on at first, big swing and a miss, strike one. 
talking to head coach Sanjay Rambi of Connard before the game. He said he'll try to lobby, of course, for Celio to be a repeat performer as an all-conference standout. He said the problem is, without having the regular fence at Connard, he's had six or eight doubles that would have been home runs in other parts. He said if you'd gone to the other coaches and said, hey, my guy's got eight home runs, a little easier, Jeff, to make that an all-conference selection. <laughs> All right, I think Sanjay's going to have to uh, basically ask the grounds crew to cut the, cut the lawn a little cl closer. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly right. No balls and two strikes. All-conference matchup here between Jeter and Celio. Swing and a pop-up. The catcher calling for, and he drops the ball. Ben Castro had it deflect off of his glove. Jeff Billing and I were talking about his terrific defensive receiver. Doesn't have a pass ball to his credit on the season, but uh, that's his first error, unfortunately, for him. Yeah, and it just gives a very dangerous hitter another chance, another shot at it. Uh, let's see what Celio can actually do here. Uh, in, the, in the first game, they walked him in a, intentionally in a tough spot. So let's see what happens. It's another 0-2 on the way. Swing and a pop-up towards left center field. Easy play for the left fielder coming in. That's Patrick O'Keefe to make the catch. And that's the second out of the inning as Pat Barron goes back to first. So two outs and a runner on first. And the righty batting cleanup man, Colby Jones, the third baseman, stands in. 292. No home runs, 14 runs batted in for Jones. 300 hitter a year ago. The biggest hit of the year so far came in the seventh inning of the game against East Hartford, a game that Connor eventually won in eight innings. Swing and a miss, runner going, throw down the second, not nearly in time, and a stolen base for Pat Barrett. So Connor able to get a runner into scoring position with two down. And you know the mark of a great pitcher, Jeff, one of them, those pitchers that can get ahead of the hitters. And we've seen that time and time again here in the first inning by Jeter. Absolutely. Just about every single uh, pitching coach in the major leagues wants that first strike. All one on the way. Swing and a foul, first base side. And it's no balls and two strikes. Barron the runner at second. Two down here in the top half of the first inning. Hall, the designated home team for this one. They played earlier this year at Connard, and Connard came out on top of that one. Bad news for the Chieftains in that one. They went on to their next game. Jeff committed eight errors in a loss to Avon. So they went from a perfect game in terms of defensive play to one where they had eight miscues. Strike three called. Side retired. What an inning and what a great start for Chase Jeter. No runs, one hit, one error, and a runner left stranded at second. We go to the bottom half of the first inning here at Fiendella Field in Mayor's Cup action. Connor nothing. Hall coming to bat as you watch West Hartford High School Sports on WHC-TV, Channel 5. The War Chief Sports Council would like to say thanks to our game-changing sponsors, including those at the all-state level, and they include Keating Insurance, MACA, Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reach PC, Attorneys at Law, ESPN, the Entertainment and Sports Programming Network, College Prep Express, and the McConnell Family Law Group. Thanks to all of our sponsors, and for you to get involved with the sponsorship, go to their website, at war-chief.net. That's war-chief.net. So here come the Hall Warriors in the bottom half of the first inning as they get set to face the senior pitcher Mike Matthews on the hill, 4-2 and two with a 1.88 earned run average. And he'll face a lineup that includes Andrew Nicholas leading off at shortstop. Brian Ranker, the third baseman, hits second. Patrick O'Keefe in left field bats third, and Colin Fitzsimmons cleans up at first base. Batting fifth is the pitcher, Chase Jeter. The sixth batter is Griffin Van Rye in right field. Michael Cicerello at second base hits seventh. Ben Castro, the catcher, hits eighth. And Colin Kuzia is the center fielder, batting at number nine. Matthews on the air, as we said, four and two, 1.88. 41 innings pitched, 33 hits. He's walked eight. Struck out 46, and Jeff, you like those pitchers that can strike out more than a batter per inning. <laughs> yep, absolutely. And uh, his game last year here um, was really impressive. He had struggled all year with his, his control and just threw a beautiful game against uh, Hall last year. 
to win it and also take the uh, MVP. Yeah, he was uh, the MVP last year, and he was the year before as a sophomore. He came out of the bullpen that day in 2015, and uh, three plus innings to get the win, and uh, catapult uh, his team on into the postseason that year. Connor and Hall both going to the CIAC Class Double L State Tournament that'll begin in earnest next week as uh, Hall comes in with the 12 wins. They could get a first round home game, which would be nice for them. Connor on the bubble in terms of that. They need to win today and get some help and they got the 12 and 8 ledger as uh, they move forward. But what an improvement, Jeff Kaplowitz, for the Chieftains. Just 4 and 16 a year ago for Sanjay Rambia in his first year, and uh, he's turned him around and has him on the verge of playing 600 baseball. Well, see, seeing him against Connor, uh, I mean, against Hall uh, at Connor High School, um, the top of their lineup is very, very impressive. Uh, they hit the ball hard, a lot of line drives, got a lot of uh, base runners. And uh, defensively, they have uh, shown that they are as good as, as anyone in the league. Yeah, they really are. And uh, they've, they've committed fewer than two errors per contest. And if you throw out the eight that they had in that one game against Avon, of course, that uh, drastically would reduce the statistic even more. Yeah. Again, it's a makeshift lineup today for Jeff Billings' team. We're not going to identify the culprits, of course, but... Uh, there were some problems with the off-campus incidents, and there might be a few names and numbers in this hall lineup that you don't recognize. There was some disciplinary action, and uh, we'll see what happens as it affects the Warriors going forward in the contest here today. Andrew Nicholas is usually the second baseman for this team. He's been moved to shortstop today, and he'll lead things off against Mike Matthews here in the bottom half of the first inning. Joe Celio at first, Max Main at second, Jeff LaRosa at short, Colby Jones at third, the interior defense for Matthews, who works with Sam Purcello. First pitch is bounced up the middle. LaRosa, the shortstop, on one big hop. The gun to first in time for the out. 6-3 if you're scoring at home, and that's one out in the bottom half of the first inning. Yeah, one one pitch. <laughs> yeah, that's as efficient as you can be. And, and Coach Rambia, Jeff, one thing that he mentioned, he said Jeff LaRosa took the job as a starting shortstop a year ago after just one week as a freshman, and he really is rock solid and consistent, and that's what you need, that defense up the middle. Absolutely. On the outside corner, a called strike to Brian Recker, the third baseman. So we're going to watch Matthew's approach here um, and see what he's trying to do in the early innings. Swing and a foul, first base side, as he faces Recker. Just a sophomore, getting the start at third base today. 10 for 30 on the season, and one great statistic for him. Only one strikeout in 33 plate appearances. That's by far the best percentage on either team. 0-2 pitch stays high, and the count goes to 1-2. and two. Three walks and one strikeout. Good contact hitter, and that's why he's in the number two spot. For head coach Jeff Billing in his seventh season at the helm of the Hall Warriors baseball team. Pitches line towards the gap in right center field. The diving attempt is not made, and it's going to be extra bases. Here's Renker, rounding second, heading for third. They get the ball back towards the infield. He's coming, and he's going to get the stop sign at third base. They're going to throw it all the way in, and he's going to come in and score. And that's just what the Hall Warriors needed. They take a 1-0 lead. Pat Barron made the diving attempt, and when he didn't come up with it, ball went all the way to the wall in right center field, and Renker came all the way around to score the first run of the game. So that's the way for the Warriors to start, Jeff. Yep, that's a three, you know, triple, and uh, then with a little uh, help from the third base coach, Jeff Billings. He basically uh, deked a little and uh, got in on that overthrow. And the pitch is swung on and fouled on the right field side and out of play. Patrick O'Keefe standing in. Had a big year at the plate so far for Hall, batting 462. A home run and nine RBIs. The home run, one of three that the Hall team has managed through their first 18 games. Swinging a foul, first base side and out of play. 
has a 517 on base percentage and a slugging percentage of 596. Adds up to a 1.113 OPS. Anytime you have that OPS, Jeff, over a thousand, you know that you're raking, right? <laughs> Absolutely. That's a lot of a lot of time spent on base. <laughs> exactly. Here's the 0-2 from Matthews. Line towards center field. Barron, a much more routine play, reaches up and makes the catch for the second out of the inning. So two outs and nobody out. Well, so far, Matthews' pitches are up, and um, he's going to have to find a, a groove inside and out and a little bit lower. Right now, they're right at letter high, and easy, easy pickings for Hall. Swung on and driven by Fitzsimmons to deep left center field. With Barron drawing a bead, reaches up, makes the catch for the out that retires the side. But one run on one hit and nobody left. End of one here at Fiendella Field at the University of Hartford in 2017 Mayor's Cup action. It is Hall 1, Connor no score. We'll return with more action right after this on WHC-TV Channel 5. Fiendella Fields at the University of Hartford. So we go to the top half of the second inning. Hall in front of the Chieftains by the counts of one to nothing. As we get set for the five, six, and seven batters in the top half of the frame, Jeff LaRosa followed by Mike Mack and Nick Gagliotti to face Chase Jeter. We talked about Jeter's dominance so far this year. Started with the perfect game against Rockville. Threw a six-inning shutout against Fitch. Complete game 6-1 victory over Platt. And his one blemish, a 2-1 loss to Northwest. As the first pitch to LaRosa is taken low for ball one. A 1-0 complete game win over Windsor. And six innings and a no decision in the game against Simsbury before he takes the hill here this afternoon. One ball and no strikes to the sophomore shortstop Jeff LaRosa standing in. And the 1 0 is wide, two balls and no strikes. So Rosa on the year batting 352, has a home run and 22 runs batted in. He's called by head coach Rombi as the captain of his infield. So solid both defensively and offensively. Swinging for the downs that time, cut out and missed. Two balls and one strike. Those 22 runs batted in that he's knocked in this year, second on the team in that mark, behind Gagliotti, the DH, who has 24. Swing and a miss, and the count leveled at two balls and two strikes. And Jeff, also during the fall campaign, plays for Mr. Master Sassimo and the football team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, and... And the 2-2 on the way. Cut on and miss, strike three. And that's already three punch outs for the junior left-hander, Jeter. But he reared back and reach for a little something extra that time. Yeah, the, the uh, two change-ups really uh, fooled DeRosa and then um, to come in with that fastball. So here's the senior left fielder, Mike Max, standing in. Solid up and down the line. This counter team hitting over 300 as a team. And Mike, no ex exception there. He takes strike one, no balls and a strike. And Sanjay said before the game, it's very gratifying the year he's had because, frankly, in everybody's estimation, he had a very, by his standards, poor junior campaign. But he said he's come back this year in 2017 with an absolute vengeance. And he plays good defense in left field. An example was a four-catch game that he had against Southington earlier this year. He said... Uh, Kept that game close, a 6-4 loss eventually to the Blue Knights. One ball and one strike with one out here in the second. That pitch is wide for ball two. Two balls and one strike. Nick Gagliotti, the DH in the on-deck circle for the Chieftains. Cut on and miss for strike three. Second strikeout of the inning, third in a row, and four overall for Chase Jeter. A lot of movement on that pitch. That pitch uh, from the left-hander coming into the left-hander from the middle of the plate. Really a lot of movement. Excellent pitch. Yeah, very tough to 
get on top of for the hitter there. So here's Nick Gagliotti, the junior DH. He takes strike one on the inner half. Nick batting at 304. Six. Team leading 24 runs batting. I'm sorry, Jeff. Yep, no, same pitch. So he's got that going this, today. Here's the 0 1 on the way. And that's just wide. One ball and a strike. Gagliotti also has a team leading 15 strikeouts. Connor team has authored three different winning streaks of three or more this year. They have been a uh, on a roller coaster throughout much of the campaign. It's a one ball, two strike count. There's Jeter now one pitch away from striking out the side. Talked about that team batting average for Connor, 322, a team on base, 467, a team ERA of 2.37. It's bounced up there for ball two and the count leveled at two balls and two strikes. Ben Castro, the junior, catching this afternoon for Junior. Called by Jeff Billing, the head coach of the Warriors, a high-level defensive catcher. He said just as good as Tim Dixon was, and that's a high compliment because <laughs> Dixon was Very. a first-rate receiver, no doubt about it. So Castro, just a junior, will play in college. Just high outside for ball three. And it's a full count of three balls and two strikes. Castro puts down the side. Here's the payoff pitch from Jeter, swinging a foul, and I'll have to do it all over again. Again, that was right in on his hands and kept moving and boring in into the inside corner. The four-game winning streak for Hall, if outscored the opposition 44-3 during that stretch. Cut on and missed strike three, and Jeter strikes out the side. He has five through the first two innings. Three up, three down, nothing on, nothing across. Middle of the second inning here at the University of Hartford. The score remains Hall 1, Connor no score. As you watch West Hartford High School Sports here on WHC-TV, Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. The council would like to say thanks to our game-changing sponsors, including those at the all-conference level. That's a standalone sponsor, Allied Printing. And also at the captain's level, Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beards, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, Coastal Tool and Rob Ludgan, and the Connard and Hall PTO. Thanks to all of our sponsors. If you want to get involved with a possible sponsorship, go to the War Chief Sports Council's website at war-chief.net. Again, that's war-chief.net. Jeff, this is the finale of our spring presentation on Channel 5 in terms of the War Chief Sports Council and West Hartford High School Sports. Our fifth and final broadcast, and Hall needs a victory to avoid going 0-5 in those broadcasts. Well, we uh, like to always see a really competitive game. They're off to a good start, 1-0. And uh, let's see if it uh, will stay and hold up. You know what they say? That old adage, when a player makes a great play in the field to end an inning, and then he comes in and he's almost always invariably the leadoff batter. Right, so now right. we have <laughs> Now we have a pitcher who struck out the side, and lo and behold, right. there's Chase Jeter, the first up right. here in the bottom of the second against right. Mike Matthews. We talked about the interior defense for the Chieftains. In the outfield today, left to right, it's Mike Mack, Pat Barron, and Dominic Nyman. Nyman has the... Uh, Big catch and throw capabilities, according to his head coach, has three outfield assists this year. Two of those turned into double plays. And those are always bonuses mm -hmm. when the outfielders can chip in that way, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. So here's Jeter. He plays right field when he's not pitching like he is today. 260 batter. No home runs and six runs batted in. And Matthews' first pitch at the bottom of the second is outside for ball one. Jeter gets on base. He's certainly a threat to run. He's tied for the team lead in stolen bases with five. Has two doubles on the campaign. Swing and a line drive. Base hit into right field. So a leadoff base hit for Jeter. And he will become an immediate threat to uh, try to steal second base. As Griffin Van Rye, right fielder, stands in. 
JV player who uh, getting his first at bat at the varsity level here. And what a bigger stage for him <laughs> than the Paul Goddard game. Absolutely. Celio holding Chase Jeter out at first. And a first pitch strike to Van Rye, the right fielder. Showed a little respect there, You're starting him off with a breaking pitch. Yeah. <laughs> Spun one up there, and uh, right over the heart of the plate. Here's the 0-1 on the way. And there's strike two call. Remember this from a year ago, Jeff, when Matthews works with runners on base, he becomes very, very deliberate. Almost Steve Traxel like if we throw a name from 15 years ago. Throw back to first, not in time, Jeter Duck in standing. Uh, are we ready to go for a commercial? Is that what you think? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Bob Murphy? Uh, God rest his soul to be in Ralph Kiner to introduce a Rheingold for us or, or such. 0 oh, 2 pitch out of the way. Swing and a foul, first base side. My dad, mom and dad, if uh, they'll be watching eventually uh, when the game goes on uh, the computer, took dad to see the Mets and Steve Traxel play. Yes. The game time temperature was 97 degrees, Jeff, and I swear we were sweating more than Traxel was after six innings. Bouncing ball up the middle. Here's La Rosa. Steps on second for one. Throw to first double play. Beautifully done by the countered shortstop. Six unassisted to three for the twin killing, and all of a sudden, two outs and nobody on in the inning. Boy, it's such a big help to your pitcher when you can get good interior defense. And isn't that the pitcher's best friend, the ground that, ball double play? Without question. <laughs> and that was tailor-made right over the bag. Yep. So here's Michael Cicerello, the second baseman, standing in. Lefty batter. Swing and a ground ball at the first. Fielded by Celio. He'll take it to the bag unassisted. Side retired. So Matthews able to face the minimum in the inning because of the ground ball double play. No runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left. Two innings in the books here at Fiendella Field, and your score, Hall 1, countered nothing. As you continue to watch West Hartford High School Sports, presented by the War Chief Sports Council on WHC-TV, Channel 5, back with more right after this. Start. Give you a silent count. Thanks so much for joining us as we continue with our West Hartford High School sports coverage here on Channel 5. Pete Lamero, along with Jeff Kaplowitz. And we'd like to thank Nild Sansone for his technical assistance here this afternoon. And Jen Evans, of course, is always back at Channel 5. Top of the third inning, Sam Porcello to lead things off for the Chieftains. And he takes a first pitch strike. No balls and one strike from Chase Jeter. Was allowed just one hit, has struck out five, including the last four in a row. Porcello, a 250 batter. No home runs, two runs batted in. Backed off the plate inside for a ball. One ball and one strike. Third year varsity catcher is Sam. Started as a sophomore. The 391 on base percentage, been hit a couple of times, also a couple of walks to his credit. Cut out and missed for strike two, one ball and two strikes. Again, as we talked about with Connard winning the earlier matchup against the Warriors 8-2, to two, all going for the split, which was something that was achieved both last year and the year before. Swing and a foul off the screen in front of the fans down the first base side. And nice crowd has gathered here, Jeffrey, this mm -hmm. afternoon. Yes, it is. I mean, yesterday uh, we lost the game because of the rain and the makeup. Nice crowd. Yeah. Late call on the rain out yesterday. It wasn't until a few minutes before. 4.30 that they made the final announcement. But uh, Mother Nature <laughs> cooperating here this afternoon. One ball and two strikes to Porcello. 8-9-1. It'll be followed by Dominic Nyman and Max Main in the counter third inning. 
The one-two pitch, swing and drive towards left center field, and that's going to fall in for a base hit. So that'll lead off base runner for the first time for the Chiefs. And Porcello, the runner on first. And Dominic Nyman steps up. What a weapon, Jeffrey, to have somebody like Dominic Nyman batting out of the nine spot in your lineup. All he's doing is batting 442 with a 491 OBP. <laughs> That's solid. <laughs> For That's, sure. That nice really nice to hide him in that spot, isn't it? That's really cool. <sighs> so we're going to pop up foul. I'm going to go back and out of play. You have another left-handed uh, stick here, and um, Jeter's been moving that, uh, what I would call basically like it goes inside and uh, keep bore, you know, bearing in on their hands. It's been an effective pitch. Yeah, it's allowed him to get a lot of, ahead of a lot of the hitters here today. Oh. And that hit the batter. And all of a sudden, the first two on here against Jeter. In the top half of the third, Porcello trots down the second, Nyman the runner at first, and back to the top. And Max Main, who was a strikeout victim, his first time up, will get a second crack at Chase Jeter. So the first threat on the base pass by either team. Of course, Hall got the one run back in the first inning on one swing of the bat. Showing bunts and taking outside for ball one. This, that was a very intelligent pitch. You got a big hole in the left side of the infield, and Jeter is base, basically pitching away from that strength. Again on the outside here. And the 1 0, and it's bunted foul, first base side. And the count levels at a ball of strike with Pat Barron waiting on deck for the designated road team here this afternoon. Jeter looking into Castro for the side. And the 1-1. One -one. There's a bump back towards him on a play at third and out at third base. They get the lead runner. One to five if you're scoring at home. Nyman down to second and Main Safe at first on the fielder's choice. Synthetic surface that they're playing on, Jeff, is not a friend to uh, bunters, that's for sure. <laughs> and it gets right back on top of fielders in a hurry. And that was the case right there. Well, being a Cincinnati fan, you know what the artificial <laughs> turf can do for batting averages. I certainly do. <laughs> All those years at Riverfront Stadium. <laughs> Of course, with five guys in the grade eight who should have should be in the Hall of Fame, I mean that that helped as well. But, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, but, I, but the surface, I'm, the I'm surface, right. absolutely. Uh, just ask George Foster as we were talking about uh, before the game. Fifty points higher for his career on uh, on the synthetic stuff as opposed to the grass. Tie it inside to Patrick Barron. You know, everybody talks about whether Pete Rose should or shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Here's the other one off that great Reds team of the 70s. Davey Concepcion should be joining Tony Perez, Joe Morgan, and Johnny Bench in Cooperstown, don't you think? Well, there's definitely uh, some talent here. Line drive, base hit, center field. Base runner Romney third coming to the plate. He will score, and the game is tied at one. It's a ribby base hit for Patrick Barron, played in Dominic Nyman. Max Main on the play goes all the way to third. And the game is tied at one. Boy, Patrick Barron just makes solid contact every time that we have an opportunity to watch him play. After a brief conference at the mound between Chase Cheater and Ben Castro, and for no other reason, just to settle his pitcher down. And here's Joe Celio. Lefty versus lefty matchup, but Joe trying to bring in Maine, which would be his 14th RBI of the season. Still only one out in the inning. And that was the bunts out by uh, Max Maine, who's now standing over at third. 
Barron being held on at first by Fitzsimmons. Runners on the corners, one down. And a first pitch ball to Celio. He flied out to left fielder Patrick O'Keefe, his first dive up. Connor looking for their first lead of the afternoon. It's a player in the top half of the third inning. And Celio calls time and is granted by the home plate umpire. Out of the mentions, 325 down the lines, 370 to the power alleys, and 400 feet to straightaway center field here at Fiandella Field. Throwback to first is not in time. As Fitzsimmons holds on, Patrick Barron. Now from the stretch, the 1-0 comes playward. Runner takes off for second. They fake the throw down there, throw back the third, not in time. And now two runners in scoring position for the Chieftains off the Patrick Barron stolen base. I think Joe was actually taking that pitch. There was a lot of communication from Sanjay down at third base coaching box. And now they're going to give him an intentional pass. Wise move by Jeff Cohen, I think. So that loads the bases. Brings up Colby Jones. Colby, a strikeout victim his first time. He bats here with the bases loaded and just one down. Opportunity for major damage in this third inning by Connor. Swing and a drive deep towards right field. Van Rye going back, reaches up and makes the catch. Runners tag from second and third. Maine comes in to score. Barron to third. It's a sacrifice fly to right and a run batted in for Jones. And the Chieftains take their first lead at two to one. Long opposite field poke that time. Yep. Uh, went after the first pitch and just drove it right into that corner out there. So a 300 foot fly ball. Plating the go-ahead run for the Chieftains. And here's La Rosa, the shortstop. Jeff does not bat him as he throws him. He bats left-handed. Still runners on the corners. Now with two down. Jeter's pitch cut out and missed. And the runner takes off for second. He'll steal it standing up. Cecilio down to second. Barron remains at third. Now a base hit to the outfield by La Rosa can play to pair. And the 0-1. Breaking ball for a strike. No balls and two strikes. I think La Rosa was looking dead red all the way that time, and he was surprised by the spinner that came plateward. Jeff trying to right. extend the inning for Mike Mack, who waits in the on-deck circle. Four counter. And the 0-2. Fastball wide. One ball and two strikes. Porcello led off the inning with a base hit. Nyman was hit by a pitch. Main bunted into a force out, but then a single by Barron, an intentional walk to Celio, and a sacrifice fly by Jones. Connard has the lead. 1-2 pitch is also off the outside court, and the count levels at two balls and two strikes. Right now, La Rosa needs to balance his stance. Got that back foot right at the back of the batter's box. Call strike three for the out. That retires the side. But in the inning, Connor on the board. Two runs, two hits, and two left. Middle of the third here at the University of Hartford in 2017 Mayor's Cup action. It is Connor two and Hall one on WHC TV. Channel 5 is presented by the War Chief Sports Council. And the council would like to thank their many sponsors at the varsity level, including Low Tide Photography, Dave Newman Photography, Blue Plate, Fast Eddie, West Hartford Youth Basketball, West Hartford Boys Travel Basketball, Open Arm Christian Ministries, Final Cut Barbershop, Edward Connors Insurance, Stanley and Elaine Phillips, 
Beth Barry Brown of the William Ravis Agency and West Hartford Girls Lacrosse. Thanks to all of our sponsors, and for you to get involved with the sponsorship, go to their website at war-chief.net. That's war-chief.net. Got a note passed along to us, Jeff, uh, before the contest today. Mike Matthews' mom talking about how all the kids on the team raised $1,100 to go towards cancer research, all part of the Jimmy Valvano V Fund, part of that uh, wonderful uh, foundation. And uh, just yeoman work by the kids, and you always like to hear great stuff like that going on. Absolutely. I don't think there's a family in America that either friends or family that have not been touched by cancer. And certainly Jimmy V was uh, an inspiration um, to all of us, not only the way he lived his life, but um, what he basically challenged the future generations to do to wipe out cancer. So it's an excellent, excellent uh, point of view. I mean, you know, a great, great thing. Very well said, my friend. Very well said. When you think of Jimmy V, I think of a couple of things. Of course, his last speech that he made at the ESPYs so was just one of the great moving, not only sports speeches, but speeches of any kind of all time. But you also think, of course, of him on the floor. You like to remember him doing what he did best, and that was coach basketball. And what a terrific win that was for NC State over Phi Slamma Jamma in the University of Houston. Absolutely. And um, him running down the court and jumping up and down and trying to find somebody to hug. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was just an, uh, an excellent, spontaneous moment. It really was. I can assure you, though, he wasn't jumping any higher than I was at that time, all the way back in Wallingford, Connecticut. First pitch swinging. Ben Castro skies one in the left center field, and Pat Barron goes over and makes the catch. There were a few of us at UConn that night that... Uh, were vested in the uh, interests of the Wolfpack. And, uh, <laughs> one of the great upsets in, in college basketball, you're a great basketball person yourself, Jeff, one mm -hmm. of the great upsets in, in basketball history. And speaking of upsets, that Celtic win over Cleveland, by the way, the other night, was the biggest upset <laughs> in terms of point spread. We don't it, like to talk it, a lot about those things. <laughs> and, and, and in just reality in general, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So here's Colin Kuja standing in with one out and nobody out. Line drive up the middle, base hit in the center field. So Kuja comes through with a base hit. And he's a one out base runner for the Warriors. That's the third hit recorded by Hall off of Mike Matthews this afternoon. They've had a hit in every inning so far. His brother Sam is uh, cheering him on. Nice. All right. Sam's in my science class. Had to take a science test today, but, he, oh. but he's here at the game cheering his brother on. It's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Throw back to first and not in time as the base runner Kuja being held on by the all-conference first baseman, Joe Celio. Jeff and I were talking during the break about, on both sides, how many lefty batters that uh, we have. And here's another case with Andrew Nicholas standing in at the top of the order for Jeff Billings' team. Andrew bounced out the shortstop his first time up. Second baseman by Trey, who's uh, playing shortstop today because of the unusual and difficult circumstances surrounding this fall Warriors baseball team. Which is taken for a strike. Nicholas, a 350 batter on the season. Missed the first 11 games of 2017 due to mononucleosis. That was a uh, illness that afflicted my older sister back in 1972, and the reason I referenced that. That allowed me to take her ticket to go to my first ever major league game at Shea Stadium, Mets and Cubs, August of 72, <laughs> some 45 years ago. They play hit and run, bouncing ball to second, fielded there by Maine, throws to first for the out, throw back to second, not in time. Oh, Celio thought that he had the out as they tried to throw behind Kuja. 
second out of the inning, and Hall almost thought that they had recorded the third out of the inning. Yeah, he slipped going around the bag and almost didn't get back. So here's the hitting star of the game so far, Brian Renkert. This is blast to right center field that eluded Patrick Barron. If we were kinder, we would give him an inside the park home run, but we can't do that as official scores. It's a triple and a, uh, and a throwing error that allowed Hall to score their run. And Ranker takes called strike one. No balls and one strike. Runner at second, two down, bottom of the third. Base hit to the outfield trying to tie the game for Hall as they trail Connard by the count of two to one. Lance towards second, cut out and miss. And Matthews, quickly ahead of Ranker, no balls and two strikes. Brian trying to extend the inning for Patrick O'Keefe. Talk about Brian being a good contact hitter, just one strikeout so far in 33 plate appearances. Bouncing ball up the middle. La Rosa picks the throw to first is high. Does he come down on the bag? He does in time for the out that retires the side. Good play and good footwork by Celio at first base to record the final out of the inning. In the inning, no runs, one hit, and a runner left stranded at second. We played three at Fiendella Field. The score remains Connor two, Hall one. This is the 2017 Mayor's Cup on WHC TV, Channel 5. And we thank Nild Sansone and Jen Evans for their technical help here this afternoon. Pete Lamoureux, Jeff Kaplowitz back with you. Speaking to you today from Fiendella Field at the University of Hartford. Annual tradition, Mayor's Cup action, Paul and Connor. Connor, the designated road team here this afternoon, and they have a 2-1 advantage as we play in the top half of the fourth inning. As Mike Mack stands in, and he's behind in the count and no balls and two strikes. Mack, Gagliotti, and Porcello, six, seven, and eight in Sanjay's lineup here in the fourth inning. Mack, a strikeout victim his first time up, one of six this afternoon for Chase Jeter. Swinging a long drive foul down the right field side. Just out in front of that one a bit, Coach K, or else... Uh, Wow, that, 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 was, that was in the cheap seats. Wow, that amazing. was really hit. <laughs> <laughs> Long way. For your number six hitter in the lineup. Mm -hmm. Again, the 0-2. Good eye that time by Mack to lay off that one. And it's one ball and two strikes. Just the one intentional walk thus far for Jeter. He's also hit a batter. He makes his eighth start of the season here this afternoon. Blown inside for a ball. And the count goes even at two balls and two strikes. Ball scored first with a run in the bottom half of the first. Connor answered with a pair in the third. And that's where we are here in inning number four. Weak swing and a miss, strike three. And that's the first out of the inning. Twice Mack has been retired on strikeouts. And again, that's seven of them now. For Chase Jeter. And to talk about those numbers, Jeff, they're, they're worth repeating. <laughs> Jeter on the year, 45 innings, just 27 hits before the game here today. How about six walks and 76 strikeouts? Ever heard That's of a 13 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's got to be. A <laughs> that is, wow. That's, and that's, that's gone, a different planet. It is, and it's gone higher since today started. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Asking for time is Gagliotti. He too down on strikes his first time up. You know, we talked about a lot of lefty-lefty matchups. That's the biggest disadvantage for any type of a hitting scenario is the lefty against the lefty. They just don't see as many left-handers in the, in the major leagues. And uh, they... It's just the movement of the ball, or I'm not quite sure. 
Cut out and miss. One ball and two strikes. There have been some really good left-handed and left-handed hitters, though. Willie Stargell comes to mind. Sure. And um, Pops, yeah. didn't matter which side he threw yeah. from. Yeah, absolutely. He was a threat. Yeah. Known, of course, for all of his days with the Lumber Company in Pittsburgh, Willie Stargell. Mm -hmm. World Series champion, 71-79, co-MVP in 79 with Keith Hernandez. But the stat that uh, near and dear to youth my friend is the uh, first man to hit a home run at Shea Stadium in 1964. Yep, and then uh, later on in his career, uh, Tom Seaver said he was one of the toughest outs that he had in the major leagues. And uh, Seaver talked about that and uh, Willie McCovey and two very, very tough left-handed hitters that Seaver had all kinds of trouble with in his career. Seaver didn't have trouble with many mm -hmm. of them, that's for sure. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes to Nick Gagliotti, the DH standing in. Nick leading this team. 24 runs batted in in 19 games. Strike three called, second out of the inning. Eight of them now for the junior left-hander for the Hall Warriors. He is really taking care of that, this part of the lineup. Uh, six up and six down by strikeouts. The, the five, six, seven. Five, six, trio. and seven. Yeah, La Rosa, Mac, and Gagliotti. Drawing the letter K all over our uh, scorebooks here. Yeah. Yep. So here's Sam Porcello, and he got things started in that uh, third inning rally. It was his leadoff base hit that triggered things. Swing and a foul. Connor sent seven men to the plate in the third. Scored two of them and left two of them. No balls and one strike. You know, usually you'd say, in this spot, two outs, nobody on, and the eight batter up. You want to clear things so that the nine batter doesn't lead off, but nine batter happens to hit over 440, so <laughs> not the usual strategy. Cheater, a strike away from striking out the side for the second time this afternoon. And the 0-2 comes playward. Swing and a foul on the right field side and out of play. We've seen a lot of uh, weak, weak swings and swings off balance, and that is a testament to the way Jeter's delivery. And uh, kind of difficult to pick it up. It is, as we sit right behind home plate. Weak round ball, the third. Here's Renker with the pick. The long throw to first can't be handled. Backed up nicely by both the right fielder and the catcher. And Porcello is able to reach. I believe he would have beat that out anyway. Exactly. So, I think that's a, that's a base hit. Infield single for Porcello, so he's two for two. So two hits for Porcello and two for Patrick Barron. They have the four hits this afternoon for the Chieftains, and they extend the inning to the aforementioned right fielder Dominic Nyman. Hit by a pitch his first time up, and he scored the first Connor to run. Throw back to first is not in time, or Fitzsimmons is holding on the base runner for Sella. Enough le another left handed stick. Yeah. Runner takes off for second, throw down, not in time, another stolen base, and unofficially that's four steals collectively for the Connor Chieftains today. Two for Barron, one for Celio, and now one for the catcher Porcello. A runner in scoring position as Dominic Nyman bids for his ninth run batted in. 23 hits for Dominic Nyman out of the nine spot in the lineup. 23 for 52. Swing and a ground ball wider first. Fielded by the first baseman. Throws to the pitcher cover and he throws behind him. A run's going to score. And Connor takes a 3-1 to one lead. That was a tough play, especially for somebody like Fitzsimmons, who doesn't play a lot of first base. 
And he and Chase Jeter not on the same page. And Porcello comes all the way around the score, and it's an insurance run for the Chieftains, so up their lead to three to one. So an error on the play. And the runner goes down to second on the play. So back to the top, and here's Max Main. And he takes called strike one. Max struck out in the first, reached out a fielder's choice in the third when he bunted back to the mound. And Chase Jeter turned that into the first out of the third inning. Two outs here in the fourth. Swing and a base hit in the left field. The runner's rounding third, and he will score, and it's 4-1. to one. RBI base hit to left by Max Main, his 12th run batted in of the season. It's a back-to-back -back two run inning for the Chieftains who are now up four to one. So Jeff Billing, head coach of the Warriors on his way out to the mound. He wants a conference with his battery mates, Chase Jeter and Ben Castro. Inning Jeff started out innocently enough. Strikeouts of Mack and Gagliotti. But a single, an error, and another single, and all of a sudden a couple of runs on the board for the road team. I want to I want to credit that stolen base also because that that took away the force play. Sure. On on the ground ball at second. And uh, really had the second baseman out of position because of it. And uh, so that stolen base was really uh, an important part of this inning. And Bar it really is. And Barron, I'm trying to add to what is a two for two afternoon already. Patrick, also a pitcher on this team, playing center field today. And when he's on the mound, he's got a 194 average. Pitch is low, and the runner takes off for second. And the running and merry-go-round continues for the Chieftains as Max Main steals second. Pat, Pat wanted a timeout right there, but his hand came up a little bit too late. And now there's some confusion. The umpires want to come out and uh, talk about things here. Again, you work with just the two umpires. And the home plate umpire signaling Sanjay Rambia back to his third base coaching box. I think what they're talking about is the uh, base umpire might have called time out. Okay. And, um, and now the home plate umpire would have to defer to him if time was actually called out uh, with his hand up. Good observation, sir. And your explanation is right on, and Coach Rambia not getting the explanation that he wanted to hear for sure. And you hear some boos from the crowd on the uh, counter side of things. So runner back to first. The stolen base is negated. Now Pat Barrett asked for time so that he can step out. And, and that was a no pitch, so... Count is 0-0. So here we go. Runner back to first. Two outs of the inning with two runs in. Counter playing add-on here in the fourth. They have a 4-1 advantage. Throw back to first. And not in time. Boy, some of those lefty pitchers with their moves to first. Some of them. Almost look like box all the time, don't they? <laughs> Every major league manager says they're box. <laughs> <laughs> well, the rule bait is very, very clear. When you come to the plate, if you cross the plane with your knee or your, or your front leg, you've got to come home. And um, a lot of them are very questionable, right on the line. Sure. Jeter again looking towards first, goes that way, and back standing is Max Main. 
So the stolen base, which is a non-stolen base, is uh, playing in Jeter's head right now. It really is. There's a young man who's used to having things his own way throughout all of the season, coming in with an ERA of 0 0.62. Runner takes off, pitches low, throw down the side, great throw on the money, in time for the out. Beautiful throw by Ben Castro to retire Maine and end the things here in the top half of the fourth inning. Two runs, two hits, an error, and nobody left. Middle of the fourth here at the University of Hartford. The score now is countered four and Hall one as you continue to watch West Hartford High School Sports on WHC-TV Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. And the council would like to say thanks to our game-changing sponsors, including those at the all-state level, Keating Insurance, MACA Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reach PC, Counselors at Law, ESPN, the Entertainment and Sports Programming Network, College Prep Express, and the McConnell Family Law Group. Thanks to all of our sponsors, and for you to get involved with the sponsorship, head to their website, war-chief.net. That's war-chief.net. Bottom half of the fourth inning, Mike Matthews on the mound. As he gets set to face the heart of the order for the Hall Warriors, 3-4-5, and five. Patrick O'Keefe, Colin Fitzsimmons, and Chase Jeter. Balls had a hit in every inning, but have played in just one so far. Now they have to play a little catch-up. Yeah, a lot, a lot of baseball games are uh, defined by one inning. Um, great pitchers always want to get out of that first inning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Clayton Kershaw, basically, uh, that's, that's what he says all the time and has had some difficulty in playoffs, you know, with that first inning or the first and second inning. Sure. And uh, right here, Jeter's going along and chase uh, two strikeouts in the inning, and then all of a sudden he starts to press and, um, and gives up two runs. So uh, hopefully for him, this inning will uh, be his inning and he can settle down and uh, have some clean frames. He can help himself with uh, the bat, certainly, this inning, as he hits uh, third in the campaign against Mike Matthews. Brian Ranker, triple slash, almost inside the park home run, the big hit for Hall this afternoon. Jeter, a single in the second, Colin Kuja, a base knock in the third. And that's been all of the offense against Mike Matthews, who, averaging over a strikeout an inning, has no strikeouts to this point. But uh, the defense behind him, in particular, Patrick Barron in center field, has three putouts already to his credit. Yeah, they're hitting, hitting the ball, but his, his pitch count is at 24 through three innings. Wow. Which is um, very, very efficient. Sure. We were talking last year about Mr. Baumgartner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how his uh, season ended this year. All those mini bikes, huh? The ace left-hander. Of the San Francisco Giants. Line drive, base hit by O'Keefe in the left field. Most solid base hit of the day for the Warriors. And for the first time today, actually the second time, pardon me, Paul has a leadoff runner aboard. Yeah. I don't know if you remember back when Robin Yell, uh, they had the Yell uh, clause in his contract because he liked snowmobiling and doing oh. all kinds of daring things. I don't remember <laughs> and, that. <laughs> <laughs> it became known as the, as the Robin Yell clause. Surprised he didn't have it in there either. Little number down the right field side is going to fall foul just by about two or three feet. As Fitzsimmons stands in, fly out to center his first time up. Been a few instances of those cases over the years. One I can think of being a Reds fan, Aaron Boone. People know him for his work on ESPN. Does a fine job as part of their Sunday night crew. He's playing a pickup basketball game and uh, blew out his knee and missed a great portion of the season. He was playing for the New York Yankees at the time. And God rest his soul, George Steinbrenner said, we're not paying for that. And it was quite contentious between the union and Major League Baseball, but uh, the boss won that one. 
Well, he felt that it was a violation of the contract. Yeah. And uh, the boss was not going to back down on too many things. No. <laughs> There's a strike to Fitzsimmons. And uh, Matthews ahead of no balls and two strikes. I'm sorry, Jeff. No, no. I read Madden's book uh, about about uh, Mr. Steinbrenner. <laughs> what fabulous book. Oh, fabulous book. Great writer, by the way, yeah. as you know. No balls and two strikes. Throw back to first. And diving in safely is O'Keefe. Four to one the score. Connor in front. Hall trying to climb back in things here as they bat in the bottom half of the fourth inning here at Fiendella Field. Matthews with the 0-2. Breaking ball stays high and inside. One ball and two strikes. Sam Porcello, the catcher this afternoon for Connor. Just one error on the season. And has kept pass balls to a minimum. Both of these teams blessed with fine defensive catchers. And they can hit too. Timeout taken by Fitzsimmons. And again, Matthews is slowing down the, the entire pace. Batters rightly so get, you know, stepping out. Sure. That's going to affect your fielders too behind you. They like a Nice crisp pace, as it were. One two pitch. Nubbed in the left field. That's a base hit. Found a nice hole between short and third that time on the left side of the infield. And here come the Warriors. First two on here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. And Chase Jeter stands in. And as you said before, uh, can help himself quite a bit right now. Mm -hmm. Chase, a former student of mine. Very nice. How was he and, as a uh, science student in the classroom? Excellent student. He, right. and, he and his brother. Nice. Mm -hmm. He and his brother, Kyle. Two on, nobody out. Pitcher against pitcher. Showing bunt, a good one. Left side. And no play. That's going to be an infield hit. All of a sudden, the Warriors have the bases loaded. Beautiful placement by Chase Jeter that time. Matthews got off the mound quickly, fielded his position well, but that slight indecision whether to go to third, and by the time that he turned around and looked towards first, he didn't have a play there. Without a runner on second, that would have been the third baseman's play, and pretty easy play, but he had to scamper back to, to the bag at third base. So they're loaded with nobody down, and the right fielder, Griffin, Van Rye. Bouncing ball. They're going to come home with it. Celio to the plate. They get the force out. No return throw. Beautiful play by Celio. No hesitation whatsoever. And he fired a perfect strike to Sam Porcello for the force out at home to retire O'Keefe, the first out in the bottom of the fourth. Here's Michael Cicerello standing in. Senior infielder. And he takes a first pitch strike on the outer half. No balls and one strike. You know, Jeff, watching Mike the last couple of years, he did an excellent job bearing down with runners on base. And he's trying to wiggle out of the deepest sort of trouble here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. This is this is the kind of test that um, he's been through before, as you said, and uh, he calls on past experiences. Um, let's see if he's successful. Sanjay calls him an absolute bulldog on the mound. That was a nickname, of course, for Oral Hershiser when he was wheeling and dealing, 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm for the LA Dodgers. There's a strike, knee high right over the plate, and Matthews quickly ahead in the count and no balls and two strikes against the number seven batter in the Hall lineup. O'Keefe led off with a single, Fitzsimmons followed, and Jeter had the bunt hit. They were loaded, but 
Then Van Rye grounded into the fielder's choice. Celio throwing the runner out at home. And now a strike away from the second out is Mike Matthews. And time is called. As again, Matthews taking too much time on the mound. At this particular junction, I would uh, have the shortstop and second baseman in double play depth uh, to end the inning and have the corners in. Connor has already turned one double play behind Matthews to get out of an inning. They dearly love another one. And the 0-2. That's inside. Nice stop by Porcello that time. And it's one ball and two strikes. Ben Castro, the catcher for Hall, waiting in the on-deck circle. Three on, one out. Bottom of the fourth. Four to one the score. Connard in front. Hall trying to do something about it. Thought about offering. Good job of pulling the bat back and the count level with two balls and two strikes. Now as a batter, this is a green light pitch because Matthews does not want to go full. Oh, very good point. This is what they want to be the action pitch, right? I would imagine that's what he's thinking. A glance towards second. Now Plateward with the 2-2, bounced up the middle, base hit in the center field. Two runs are going to score, and just like that, it's a 4-3 ball game. Clutch hit by Michael Cicerello. A two-RBI single makes it 4-3. So how do you like that? We come in with a game with two pitchers whose combined ERA is less than two. And all of a sudden, we got a 4-3 ball game in the bottom of the fourth. That was definitely a hitter's pitch. The count, the count was favoring him, and uh, as I said, Matthews did not want to go full with the bases loaded. So here's the catcher, Castro, who flied out to center fielder, Pat Barron, his first time up. Two on, still only one out in the inning. Tying run at second. <laughs> And a strike to Castro. That last base knock by Cicerello, the seventh hit already for Hall. They've out hit the Chieftain seven to five. Four hits this inning. Yeah. Out of the five batters who have come to the plate. The 0 1, bouncing ball towards second, fielded by Maine. Go to second one, there'll be no relay to first. Well, he's safe. Safe at second. Oh, it's they're falling the safe. Wasn't sure if that was the call or if they're going to call him for sliding out of the uh, baseline there. But no. then, according to the base umpire, he the uh, shortstop was off the bag when he caught the ball. Good, good eyes there, Jeff. And they're loaded again with one out. As Jeff Billing has all kinds of instructions. Or Griffin Van Rye has now reached third. So Van Rye at third, Cicerello at second, Castro at first. One down. Again, the tying run just 90 feet away. The potential go-ahead run standing down at second. And here's Colin Kuja, the center fielder, one for one. He singled back in the third inning. And he takes a fastball high for ball one. Third baseman Jones, even with the bag. First baseman Celio, inside the bag. They're playing a double play depth at second and short. Big cut, a foul back by Kuja. And we can't even add a ball, a strike. All as we talked about, four game winning streak. They've defeated Ram, Glastonbury, Rocky Hill, and Buckley during the streak, outscoring the opposition 44 to 3. That stays high for ball two. Two balls and one strike. This is the regular season finale for Connard here today, but not for Hall. Warriors have to come right back at it tomorrow. 
They'll play over at Beehive Field in New Britain to wrap up the 2017 regular campaign. And both of these teams, of course, gearing up for the state tournament next week. Paul wins out these two games. They'll get a home game. Ball strike two. Borderline pitch that time taken by Kuja. And it's two balls and two strikes. Three on, one out, two in. Connard's lead over Hall has been trimmed to four threes. We play here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. And the pitch on the way. And that's high for ball three. So the count goes full. High drama the in the fourth yeah, inning. Absolutely. <laughs> count is full. Bases are full. No place to put them, as they say. That's correct. Matthews looks into Porcello for the side. The senior righty pitches. A swing and a foul. Right field side and out of play. And we'll do it all over again. How many times have you said that in your career? <laughs> <laughs> Seven pitches this and that. <laughs> and again, the payoff pitch. After a very, very extended hold. High for ball four, and that's going to walk in the tying run. Great at bat by Kuja that time to wait out Matthews. Van Rye touches the plate, and we're 4-4 four four as we start from scratch here in the fourth inning. And the bases remain loaded as Cicerello down to third and Castro in the second. And a big conference in the mob. As the entire Connard infield gathering around the pitching coach as some words of instruction for Mike Matthews on the hill. Well, if I can read his, his uh, gestures, pitching coach is telling Matthews to get on top of the pitch and bring it down. Um, dangerous around the letters and uh, need, needs them to get over the top of the pitch and bring it in. That was his first walk of the entire afternoon. And we're talking, Jeff, now about a young man. That's just his ninth walk in 44 and two-thirds innings. If you do the math, they play seven innings as opposed to nine, but just to work it out towards nine innings, that's only 1.8 walks for nine innings. So back to the top, and here's Andrew Nicholas, and he takes outside for ball one. Nicholas 0 for 2, hasn't gotten the ball out of the infield. Grounded to short in the first, grounded to second in the third. Game tied at 4. It's all trying to take their second lead of the afternoon. It's still only one out in the frame. Swing and a fly ball. Left center field. The outfielders look at each other. The ball falls in. One run's going to score. And the other runners move up to second and third. An RBI for Nicholas, and the Hall Warriors have come all the way back off the mat to take a 5-4 lead as Pat Barrett and Mike Mack in the outfield played a game of, I got it, you take it. <laughs> that brings back my 62 Mets, who <laughs> did that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> On their way to 120 losses. In oh, was, my goodness. And what was a 160-game season. So Cicerello comes in to score the tie-breaking run. Four runs in the inning. And Hall has taken a 5-4 lead. And the first pitch to Brian Renker is ball one. That team started off in the, in the first expansion of the National League, getting caught in the elevator after they had dinner with Joan Payson, their owner. <laughs> and didn't make it to, to the ballpark, to Old Bush Stadium, <laughs> on time. <laughs> she, was make, she was making a, uh, a dinner for them, you know, yeah. to nice kick, off, kick off the franchise, and they all got stuck in the elevator. <laughs> Foreshadowing the 1962 season. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> a total exercise in futility. <laughs> 
Wall high and inside, they're Brian Ranker. But what a love affair that uh, New York had with that team. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Without a doubt. And out of nowhere, seven years later in 1969, one of the great stories to this day mm -hmm. in Major League history, the Miracle Mets. Swing and a foul by Ranker. Two balls and one strike. He was hacking away there, getting the green light on a 2-0. With the bases loaded here in one out. Beat the Atlanta Braves in what was the first year of divisional play in Major League Baseball, 1969, and then a five game win over the Baltimore Orioles. Tom Seaver and Jerry Kuzman leading the way on the mound for that team. The 2 1 pitch, line drive, base hit in the right center field. Two more runs are going to score. And the Hall Warriors lead 7-4. to four. Two RBIs for Ranker. It's a six-run fourth inning for the Hall team. And they've batted around. They have. So O'Keefe is up, and he started it off with a base hit. He's the tenth man to bat here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Sanjay Rambi has come out to the mound. And a disappointing afternoon for Mike Matthews, to say the least. A young man who's pitched extremely well, has hit well, has had a terrific career for the Chieftains. Mayor's Cup MVP last year for his work on the mound. Also Mayor's Cup MVP in 2015 for his work coming out of the bullpen that day. Brian Ranker, two-run single, just like Michael Cicerello. It's kind of ironic, talking to Jeff Billing before the game, we invite both coaches, either one is victorious, mm -hmm. to join us for a post-game interview with a player. And I said to, to Coach Billing, I said, if you win, I'd like to see you and Chase Jeter. And he said, even if it's a 10-8 ball game? I said, oh, Coach, it's not going to be a 10-8 ball game. No. Seven to four. Yep. About halfway through. As big Patrick O'Keefe, as Jeff told you, bats for the second time this inning. Single to start things. He didn't score a run this inning. He was forced at home plate as he takes a pitch on the outer half for a strike. They don't have the hard and fast rule in high school like they do in the major leagues where if you make two trips to the mound by a pitching coach and or manager that uh, your night is done. Yeah. They're going to stay with Matthews after the two conferences this half inning, both the pitching coach and head coach Sanjay Rabia coming out. It's an 0-1 count to Patrick O'Keefe. Runners out of the corners with one out. And that's inside for ball one. Breaking ball almost hit him that time. Yeah. Then we go back to that uh, 62 Met team and Roger Craig, who won lost 20 games that season. Wow. Um, became one of the best pitching coaches in the major leagues. Exactly. And actually the author of the split finger fastball. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Suter and others. Yeah, can thank their lucky stars for Roger Craig, who also was a very good manager for the San Francisco Giants, led them to the pennant and eventual World Series loss to the Oakland A's in 1989. Yeah. Swinging a mile high pop up behind second base, short center field. Patrick Barron coming in makes the catch. He'll throw to the plate. Beautiful throw on the line to Sam Porcello, and the runner cannot advance off third. Nicholas had to stay put after O'Keefe is retired. That's the second out of the inning. So Colin Fitzsimmons stands in. He had a single and a run scored earlier this half inning. He's one for two on the day. Nine hits for a haul. And a half dozen of those have come here in this fourth inning. Matthews gets the side. 
Has cut out of this. No balls and one strike. And the old one. Cut out of it. Strike two. So Matthew's now one pitch away from getting out of further difficulty here in this fourth inning. Well, Fitzsimmons tries to extend the inning for his pitcher, Chase Jeter. Ranker being held out first by Celio. Runner takes off for second. Runner comes towards the plate, and now they're going to have him caught in a run down. Runs him back towards third, the diving tag, and he's out. And that's the out that retires the side. But major damage done in the inning. Six runs on six hits for Hall. At the end of four, the Warriors take the lead. It's Hall 7, countered 4 on WHC-TV, Channel 5. Top half of the fifth inning. And boy, has the complexion of this game changed off the six-run fourth by the Warriors. Connor now batting, trailing by three. 7-4 Hall. As Chase Jeter has a lead to work with here in the top half of the fifth inning. Faces Patrick Barron, who's two for two on the day. Swung on, line towards left center. Sliding catch is made. Colin Kuja comes in and robs Barron of a third consecutive hit, and that's the first out of the inning. On a line drive. Great. Nice sliding catch. So one out and nobody on. And here's Joe Celio standing in. Joe has flied out to left. He's walked, stolen a base, and was stranded at second in the third inning. Lefty against lefty, and the pitch is low and outside for a ball. One ball and no strikes. Jeff, you had a great stat pertinent to Matthews and the difficulty he had on the mound last inning. Yes, he threw more pitches in the fourth inning than he has the entire game. The numbers that I have unofficially is 32 pitches last inning and 24 for the first three innings. Wow. So he averaged eight pitches an inning through the first three, and he quadrupled that amount in the fourth inning. Yeah. And the Warriors putting a half dozen on the board to take the three-run lead. Fastball is blooped towards left center, and the shortstop goes out and makes the catch. Andrew Nicholas goes about 20 feet out into left field to make the play, and that's the second out of the inning. Just what you want your pitcher to do after your <laughs> offense comes through with a big inning, go out and put a quick zero on the board, and he's two-thirds of the way home. And it's Chase Jeter. Absol absolutely. He's... And against tough competition, too. The two and three hitters retired. And here's the cleanup man, Colby Jones. And he takes low and inside for a ball. Jones struck out in the first, delivered a long sacrifice fly to right in the third. So officially, he's 0 for 1 on the afternoon. A swing and a foul down the right field side, backing out of play. Jones, a 300 hitter a year ago. Started play today at 292. Second year starter on the baseball team. And also plays defensive end as Colby Jones for Matsu Sassimo's football team. And the 0 1 from Jeter. Swung on, bounced up the middle. That's a base hit in the center field. So Jones gets his first hit of the afternoon. And that's six of them now for Connor. Two apiece for Porcello and Barron, one apiece for Colby Jones and Max Main. And here's Jeff LaRosa, twice a strikeout victim against Jeter so far this afternoon. First baseman Fitzsimmons holding Jones on at first. And a first pitch strike to La Rosa. Jeff, just a sophomore, 
22 RBIs in the 19 games coming in. And the 0-1. Swing and a foul off the third base side and out of play. And it's no balls and two strikes. Connor currently 18th in Class double L. Of course, you need eight wins to qualify for the state tournament. They have 11. 32 teams have already qualified, probably going to be 33 before all is said and done. So they're most likely staring at a first-round road game, whereas Hall could certainly be at home for round one if they can hold on and win this game today and or win their game tomorrow in the regular season finale at New Britain. 1-2 pitch. It's low and away. Blocked nicely by Castro, and that prevents any advancement from Colby Jones. Good lateral movement by the catcher that time, Jeff. Ex excellent footwork. Got down, blocked it, moved off to his left a couple of feet, and had his eye on the first base runner at the, on the entire time. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Just inside. You can hear the moans and groans from the Hall contingent who wanted called strike three. So the count goes full, and Jones will be off with the pitch. LaRose is standing in a 532 on base percentage. Called strike three, side retired. So Chase Jeter works around the two-out single by Jones. In the inning, no runs, one hit, no runners, no errors, and a runner left stranded at first. End of four and a half. It is 7-4 to four Hall on WHC-TV, Channel 5, as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. And the council would like to say thank you to our game-changing sponsors at the all-conference level, Allied Printing, at the captain's level, Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, Coastal Tool and Rob Ludgan, and the Connard and Hall PTO. If you'd like to get involved with a sponsorship of the War Chief Sports Council, please visit their website at war-chief.net. That's war-chief.net. So we had seven broadcasts that we did in the wintertime, five broadcasts in the spring, and Jeff, we're getting excited for the fall. Of course, we're going to do the Connor Hall football game. We're going to do both the boys and girls Connor Hall soccer matches. We're going to do field hockey. We're going to do girls volleyball. And this year, we're going to do unified sports, which I think will be a nice thing. And Connor is hosting uh, soccer in, in that final. Excellent. Event. Excellent. Excellent. So. You see one of the uh, teams is, was here, the Youth League. It's a good event for them to come out to, that's for sure. Yep. You know, you do a lot of... Uh, a lot of learning by just watching, to uh, paraphrase uh, Yogi Bear. Sure. <laughs> yeah. He was one of a kind. Absolutely. Montclair, New Jersey. <laughs> I've been to his, his actual museum. Um, a, lot, a lot of very interesting stuff. Oh, I bet. I bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In fact, I have a uh, study protocol in my classroom, where I where I paraphrase Yogi, oh, and it basically says, um, if Yogi Berra didn't say it, he should have. Um, <laughs> the key to the key to the school and the key to life is to know what you know and know what you don't know before you have to know it. <laughs> As only Lawrence Peter Yogi Berra could say. <laughs> You oh, got you got to back into those things <laughs> to actually understand them. Right, right. Excuse me, I just sort of had a, a glitch here. <laughs> we have uh, Nild Sansone providing our technical assistance today, and Jen Evans, of course, will put all the pictures and sounds and coordinate things back at Channel Five. Give them a lot of credit. They do yeoman's work, especially where our games are involved. And 
you know, they came out yesterday and set up all the equipment for us with Meredith and Diana and everybody involved and then had to break it down 90 minutes later when the game was postponed. It's a great crew. It it's really a great is. Crew. It and really is. When I was coaching, uh, you know, those broadcasts, um, always loved to watch those broadcasts. In fact, they had the, uh, two years ago, the, this game, this Connor, Connor Hall game yeah. from uh, UHAR. Uh, they had a rebroadcast the other day, so wow. I caught, yeah, caught a little of it. So where the young man from Hall was thrown out at home plate <laughs> trying to tie the game, and that's how the game ended. That's something we see every day? No, no. We have Jeff Billing talking with one of the umpires, making some lineup corrections. And again, he has a uh, very short bench because of some disciplinary action that had to be taken <laughs> against a few of his student athletes. Colin Fitzsimmons, when we get play underway, will lead things off. He was at home plate in the batter's box when the last inning ended, when the runner was thrown out at third, or tagged out at third, as part of the rundown to end a six-run Hall uprising in the bottom of the fourth inning that has them in front 7-4. As play gets underway here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. And we have a new pitcher on the hill for the Catter Chieftains. First pitch comes plate word and it's called strike one. Left hander on the mound getting set to face Fitzsimmons. Ground ball towards the hole, base hit going into left field. So Fitzsimmons has a two for three afternoon working for himself. And the Warriors in the double digits in the hit count. That's their 10th of the afternoon. And Chase Jeter stepping in. He's taken for a strike. Number two. Is that the now? Yeah, this is the number. This uniform number, number two. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jay Falvey is in. Mm, We're okay. looking at our scorecard here, and uh, the left column is the position. And then it's Falvey, the left-hander. On the mound here for the Catter Chieftains, replacing Mike Matthews, who had, by his standards, a uh, difficult afternoon, allowing seven runs over four innings. Throw to first is not in time. Line drive, caught by the second baseman, throw to first double play. Max Main reaching out and snagging that line drive and throwing back to first for the DP, two outs in the inning. Second double play turned by the Connor defense. So two outs and nobody on, and Griffin Van Rye stands in. Ironically enough, he bounced into that first double play, also reached on a fielder's choice and scored a run, unofficially he's 0 for 2 on the afternoon. And he takes a strike, no balls and one strike. Fastball is low, 1 and 1. Falvey looks in to Porcello for the side. And the 1-1. Line drive towards second. 
caught by Maine, side retired. So the Max Maine show here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left. We go to the sixth here at Fiendella Field at the University of Hartford. It is Hall 7, countered 4 on WHC-TV Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. Okay, Nil. First pitch of the top half of the sixth inning is grounded foul. And no balls and one strike to Mike Mack. It'll be Mack, Gagliotti, and Porcello. Six, seven, and eight. And Sanjay's attack. As Connor tries to play some come from behind baseball here in the last two innings. They need three to top. He joined us late. Paul had a one nothing lead into the third. Connor put up back-to-back two-run frames in the third and fourth out a 4-1 lead. And then Hall batted around in the bottom half of the fourth inning, sent 10 to the plate, six of them scored, and they have a 7-4 advantage as we play here in the sixth inning. Connor, two balls and one strike to Mack. I'm sorry, Jeff, who was yeah. twice a strikeout victim. Yeah, Connor has every ability to come back. They were down to East Hartford 7-1 to one in late innings and won that game in extra innings. Great point. So they definitely have it in them. Two balls and two strikes. Oh, borderline pitch there. And it's ball three. So the count goes full. Good eye by Mack. This is the part of the order that Jeff was talking about earlier. La Rosa, Mack, and Gagliotti have combined 0 for 7, 7 strikeouts. Cut out and missed strike 3. So that's 8 of those 3 batters, and that's 10 overall. So one out and nobody on, and Nick Gagliotti will bat. Twice a strikeout victim so far in his own right. Ball one is outside. One ball and no strikes. There's a called strike on the inner half. And it's one and one. Castro gives the sign, and the 1-1 one, one from Jeter's low and inside. And it goes 2-1. and one. Well, as we said, we'll play tomorrow. They'll wrap up the regular season at New Britain. And all focus on the state tournament next week. Cut on and missed. Two balls and two strikes. And that's that excellent pitch that starts in the middle of the plate and then... You know, just comes right in on the hands. Tough for either batter, but especially a left-handed batter. Right. Number foul. Good job by Gagliotti to get a piece of it that time. And he stays alive at two balls and two strikes. The Hall Warriors last year, Jeff, victorious in the state tournament for the first time in Jeff Billings' campaign. In fact, key stat, we're not seeing Tyreek Robinson today. Tyreek Robinson... Usual starting center fielder for Hall. Cut out and miss. Ball is dropped, and the throw to first completes the strikeout. Tyreek Robinson has a tournament victory for baseball, basketball, and soccer, all three sports. How about that? <laughs> and a former student of mine. <laughs> Another one. Nice. <laughs> yeah, he's a great kid. Absolutely a great kid. And... Uh, and obviously a terrific athlete, too. Yeah. So that part of the lineup has been... Uh, stymied. Stymied and put away with all kinds of Ks. Outside for a ball to Sam Porcello. Sam doing his part offensively out of the eighth spot 
in the Chieftains lineup. Two for two with a run scored. Also has a stolen base. Connor had the running game going early. Of course, a lot easier to be aggressive when you have the lead and you're trying to play add on. Two balls and no strikes. And the Jeter pitch. That catches the inside corner. Two balls and one strike. Chase only throws top of the gun, according to head coach Jeff Billing, about 86 miles an hour. But again, as he continues to grow and weight train and strengthen that arm, I'm sure by the time he reaches Dartmouth in a year and a half, he'll be around the 90 mark, wouldn't you say, Jeff? Yeah, and we talked earlier about Tom Glavin, uh, sure. 90 miles an hour, and he made it to the Hall of Fame. Inside out, up and down, just learn how to pitch. Just and um, and not as good an example on my part would be Jamie Moyer, as it's cut on and missed foul at the, the plate. Certainly not as good as Glavin, but he had the staying power as a lefty. He'll go down as the last person I ever saw to play a sport to be older than me in attendance. He was 47 in 2012. I was 46. And I saw him in Cincinnati. It was his last start, and he gave up five solo home runs to the Reds. And the Reds won that day. Matt Latos and company. Cut on and missed strike three. And for the third time today, Chase Jeter has struck out the side. We go to the bottom half. Seven to four. Ball in front on WHC-TV Channel 5 is presented by the War Chief Sports Council. And speaking of the council, thanks to our sponsors at the all-state level. And they include Keating Insurance, MACA, Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reach PC Counselors at Law, ESPN, College Prep Express, and the McConnell Family Law Group. For you to get involved with a sponsorship, go to their website, war chief Dot net. That's war-chief.net. Well, that, um, that brings Mr. Jeter to uh, 96 pitches, and there is some activity in the bullpen at this particular juncture. 12 strikeouts on the afternoon. Of course, his season and career high, the 15 that he had, Opening day against Rockville, authoring the perfect game. Just wanted to correct ourselves, myself in particular, I want to make a, an apology. It's not Jay Falvey on the mound. Dominic Nyman had come in from right field. So it's Nyman, the left-hander and replacement of Matthews, getting set for his second inning of work here in the bottom half of the sixth inning as Hall, as the great announcer Marty Brennan would say, batting for what they hope is the final time today. Absolutely. One of the hitting stars, Michael Cicerello, he and Brian Ranker each two-run singles as part of that six-run fourth inning. Ranker also had that triple and scored a run back in the first inning as well. So they've been big here today. Bottom third of the order, Cicerello, Castro, and Cuja set the bat here for the home team. Thanks to our hosts here at the University of Hartford. Always nice to come here and get to hang out for a couple hours in the press box and bring the game to you on Channel 5. And talked about Nyman's efficiency and abilities in the outfield with those three outfield assists that he has so far, Jeff. It's translated well to what he's done on the mound as well. Yep. Um, really been very, very efficient. Fly ball, left field side, down the line, fouled. About four feet foul down the left field side. A long, loud strike. And it's 0-2. 
Dominic Nyman on the mound this year, three and three, ERA a 1.40, and in 30 innings, 31 strikeouts, 11 walks. He's allowed just 27 hits, and opponents are just batting 213 against him so far. Take it high and inside for a ball. That is one ball and two strikes. Rebroadcast of this game will be on June the 3rd at 9 o'clock. Pointed out by Mr. Paul McConnell. He and Dennis Swanton do such a marvelous job with all of their volunteer efforts with the War Chief Sports Council. Little looper towards left, and coming in is Mike Mack, and the senior puts it away for the first out here in the bottom of the sixth. Those guys, Jeff, work tirelessly and just give so much of themselves. So really a neat thing to be able to broadcast the games, but they do so much more than just the broadcasts, uh, the money that they raise, and seeing you at the tailgate party in years past. And right. Uh, you know, when they introduced the War Chiefs Council, um, it was really uh, a blessing for the town of West Hartford. And it gives us a, uh, a part of our personality and highlights some of our great student athletes here. One ball and no strikes, swing and a foul. That's right back at us. Castro standing in 0 for 2 on the day, flight out to center, also reached on a fielder's choice and scored a run. And the coaches as well, too. I mean, we like to, all of you men and women that uh, <laughs> have been great coaches for so long. Bouncing ball towards first, fielded on a big hop by Celio. He'll take it unassisted to the bag, two away. Well, we, uh, we appreciate it when uh, there is community support. And uh, when we have that support, it makes our job a lot easier. Oh, sure. So two outs and nobody on. And here's Kuja, and he takes high for a ball. Colin Perfect on the day out of the ninth spot. Singled in the third. Bases loaded walk, credited with an RBI, and a run scored also in the fourth. And it's two balls and no strikes. Also made a fine running catch. Actually, Got into a slide, actually. Swinging a drive towards left. Going back on it is Mack. He's there. He makes the catch. And it is Nyman retiring the side in order. First time today that a countered pitcher has done that to the Hall offense. So last chance time upcoming for the Chieftains. We go to the top half of the seventh inning with Hall in front, 7-4 to four on WHC-TV Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. Top half of the seventh inning here at Fiendella Field at the University of Hartford. Last chance for the Chieftains, trailing seven to four. And a first pitch strike from Chase Jeter. Dominic Nyman didn't like the call. It's Nyman, Max Main, and Pat Barron, 9 1 and 2. Cut on and miss for strike two. Jeff, you can tell Jeter in a groove now. He's up the tempo a little bit. Yeah, he's feeling very, very energetic at this point. Nyman's been on base twice today without virtue of a hit, and he scored two of the four runs. Paul strike three, first out of the inning, and the 13th strikeout today for Chase Jeter. Well, if he strikes out the sides, it'll match the 15 that, um, that he had in the first game of the season. Exactly. And the umpire going down to the third base coaching box. I think to. Uh, I think he's telling I mean, Sanjay that Dominic Diamond's been tossed mm -hmm, from this mm -hmm, game. <laughs> I think we got a new batter here, so. Getting a name. So Matthew Langevin is going to stand in. So Diamond's been retired. 
what Max Main is going to be pinch hit for is Matt Langevin. Just a sophomore stands in. Sanjay was playing a little cat and mouse. He didn't like that last call, so he didn't leave the, the <laughs> coaching box. Made the umpire walk all the way down for the chain. Nine, 90 feet. <laughs> 90 feet to get the uh, Am, I, am I reading it properly? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you're right. Right on the spot, Mr. K. Right on the spot, as always. <laughs> So Langevin batting 171 on the season, also has five walks, so a 325 on base percentage. And he takes a pitch on the outside corner for a called strike. Interesting move, as Maine had been uh, one for three with a run and a ribby. Cut out and miss, so strike two. And Jeter, one strike away from strikeout number 14. And the 0-2. That's wide. One ball and two strikes. That was a good, a good waste pitch right there. It was. Close enough to maybe be tempting, but <laughs> wide enough that it was definitely a ball. Well, if he comes inside high right now, he's going to have another strikeout. Cut out and miss. Strike three. 14 of them for Jeter. And he's one out away. And it's up to Patrick Barron, who's had a good day. Two for three. Two singles, two stolen bases as well. And he's the last hope for the Connor Chieftains. All trying to take a five-game winning streak into their regular season finale tomorrow at New Britain. And if you want to follow the team on the road, that'll be a 6 o'clock start over at Beehive Field. And the first pitch to Patrick Barron is a called strike. Barron and Joe Celio need to get on to make Colby Jones a potential tying run in the batter's box. Just off the inside corner. Count level at a ball a strike. And all of a sudden, all the bleacher umpires have woken up. <laughs> <laughs> The 1-1. One, one. Swing and another left side. Fielded, but that's going to be an infield hit. Third hit of the day for Patrick Barron. And again, if Joe Celio can get on, that would bring up the tying run in the person of Colby Jones. Joe Celio, a 439 hitter coming into this one. 0 for 2 and an intentional walk. Fly to left in the first. Walked in the third, popped a short in the fifth. Trying to keep it alive for the Chieftains. And the first pitch is off the outside corner, ball one. First baseman Fitzsimmons playing behind the runner. And that run at first doesn't mean anything. There's a strike, and it's one and one. Ball one out away from achieving a split in the season series with their crosstown rivals. Connor won the first matchup 8-2. to two. Bouncing ball towards first. Tough hop. Nice play by Fitzsimmons. Goes to the bag. The game is over. And the Hall Warriors have won it by a final score of 7-4. to four, And they're all out onto the field to mob one another, including Chase Jeter, who gets the victory on the mound. And Jeffrey Knotts. Certainly his best effort, although he struck out 14 and earns the all-important victory for the Hall team. Yep, and uh, first win in a number of years in this, in this particular game. That goes back to 2014 that they last beat uh, Connors in the Mayor's Cup. As you can see, nice tradition. They're doing the Stanley Cup handshake through the uh, batter's box around home plate. And... Uh, what a win for Hall, and they can credit it to great pitching by Jeter, 14 Ks, and also that six-run fourth inning. A couple of uh, two-run singles in that one by the offense, led by Ryan Renker and also Michael Cicerello as well. This is also a good win going into the tournament, a depleted lineup. 
and they were able to take their crosstown rivals. Um, it's a, a good talking point for Coach Billings and, and moving on into the state tournament. No doubt about it. And they go in with all kinds of momentum. They have the regular season finale tomorrow against New Britain, but uh, they'll go into that game with a five-game winning streak, and they'll have Chase Jeter on the mound next week when they open up play in the CIAC Class L State Tournament. We're going to have a post-game interview with Jeff Billing and one of his players, hopefully Chase Jeter, and we'll do that right after these messages on Channel 5. But before we do so, we'd like to say thank you to Jeff Kapowitz, not only for the broadcast today, but all your years of service. You're retiring at the end of the school year. What a wonderful, wonderful human being you are. What a great job you've done in the classroom, on the sidelines, and everywhere you've been. True ambassador for all of West Hartford. Thank you for all of your service. Well, thank you very much for your kind words. Um, taught on this side of town, children graduated on the other side of town. So I'm West Hartford, uh, you know, true blue on the outside and red inside. We're going to hold you to coming back next year. We want to see you right back here next year, end of May. All right, road trip. Road trip. <laughs> come see your brothers and come see us and, and we'll, uh, we'll watch some baseball. Thank you very much. Jeff Kapowitz joining us for the broadcast today. Our, our pleasure. Hall has won it, 7-4, back with the postgame. Wrap up in interviews right after this. How about an inside the park home run? Yeah. 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 Go! Go! Ryan, 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 Ryan. Two strikeouts out from Chicarello. Two strikeouts out from When someone something goes wrong and we say we're gonna pick you up, we're gonna pick you up. The last out comes to you, man. Nobody deserved it more. Let's go. How about Castro behind the plate? Oh, yeah. Not running, not running, not running no more. Get shot down. No more. And I gotta tell you guys, I gotta tell you guys. After the sixth inning, I was planning on taking Chase out. We've been very careful. He's pitched out the whole game. But he was like, Coach, don't even try. Don't even try and finish this game for the team. How about Chase Jeter today in the mound? And I want anyone who's going to ever play in another baseball game in their life to give it up hugely for the bench today. How about the first How about the first because you're a family and you say it every day you don't just say it you mean it you guys are a family i'm so proud of you i love every one of you thank you for today man my heart needed it i think every one of your hearts needed it that's tremendous work tremendous work boys. Yeah. One last one, one last one. how about these boys give it up oh, yeah. Yeah. Jeff, five victories in a row with some terrific momentum, but this is a trophy and a victory, one for the ages for the Hall Warriors today. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Really an exciting day for us. Boys played just incredible. Competed so hard from the first inning to the last inning. Really proud of them. I think we've won seven of our last eight and feeling pretty good. Four to one, you're down, going to the bottom half of the fourth inning. What an uprising. Ten, yeah. ten come to the plate. Six of them score, and then you take control. Yeah, at bat after at bat, guys just competed. Nobody gave in a lot of two strike hits today. I think if you look through the book, um, what can you do? And all nine guys in the field, and the other eleven guys in the dugout, everybody believes in each other. Good things are going to happen. Keep the line moving, as they say in that that's inning. That's right. Turn it over. Turn it over, and that's exactly what you guys did. Sure. One more left in the regular season now. Yep. Come back can, tomorrow at New Britain. At New Britain, and then uh, the CIACs next week. Yeah, we believe we got a home game today. It's got us to a home game for state, so. Pretty safe to keep it rolling. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Good luck in the tournament, Thank certainly. You. Thank you. Chase, terrific effort today as always. Thank you, sir. 14 strikeouts through 108 pitches today. Marvelous effort. Thank you very much. What does it mean to you 
to hold that Mayor's Cup trophy? You know, I mean, this, this team's been through so much this year. Um, one of our team models that we have is that everyone's always got each other's back, and you know, I was glad that I was able to help pick this team up today. Um, we've had some struggles this past week, but, you know, that's Hall Baseball for you. We always overcome everything that's thrown at us, and uh, we cannot wait to get into the state tournament. We really like this team and the chances we've got moving forward. You won a game in the state tournament last year? That's right. And that experience certainly will help you going forward, I would imagine. Absolutely, yeah. This, this team has been tested this year, I believe. Um, we've got a lot of returning guys who experienced that game last year, and I, I think we've certainly um, got a really good chance rolling into next Monday. One of my favorite places in New England. Hanover, New Hampshire. Talk, talk sure. about what that's going to mean to you in 18 months. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I'm really excited to be going to pitch at Dartmouth. Um, you know, the recruiting process was a real grind the whole time. It was it was pretty tough for me. You know, I'm not I'm not a big guy. I'm, I'm a pretty small pitcher. Um, but you know, that program just they saw the pitches I have and my location and everything, and, and I really can't wait to be able to pitch for them down the road. And coach told me that uh, the pitching coach up there is a tough, small little left-hander right. like yourself. He's 5'10", 160 pounds, just like me, and he's a left-handed pitcher, and he, he pitched at Duke. That's great. I wanted to talk to Colin for a second. Congratulations. What an effort today, young man. Thank you very three, much. Three hits. What's it mean to you to win this game here today? I mean, just after this whole season, after four years being with all my brothers out there, I love every single one of them, and uh, being able to hold up that trophy with all my guys, that means more than anything. I mean, you were big in that big six-run uprising as well. I just wanted to do anything for my team that I could. Look forward to the state tournament, I bet. Good luck oh, to you. Definitely, thank you. Oh, terrific. Congratulations again to the, to, to the Hall Warriors. Terrific win here today. Five consecutive wins. They split the season series with the Connor Chieftains. Connor won earlier, but Hall got the one that mattered here today. Final score for the final time here at Fiendella Field at the University of Hartford. The Hall Warriors 7 and the Connor Chieftains 4. And for everybody from the War Chief Sports Council, Pete Lamoureux saying thanks for watching. Until next time, so long, everybody.